testing on. Welcome to the Keto Twins Test Kitchen. Today we're gonna to be making one of our favorite takeout options, keto-friendly pot stickers. Or we're gonna to try to make them because Sarah and I had a light bulb moment a couple weeks ago when we made a very delicious ricotta gnocchi recipe. And while we were trying it, we were like, would this work as a dumpling? Kind of reminds me of like a dumpling almost too. Can you make this into a dough? And funnily enough, I just Googled it and gnocchi is a dumpling. It's not technically pasta. And so we are hoping that this dough can create a perfect pot sticker. Sarah and I in the past have made pot stickers using cabbage. I know, boo, cabbage is nothing like dough. And so when we saw this possibility, we said we're definitely going to try it today. Do we know if it's gonna work? No. Are we gonna try it anyway? Yes. So having never made a dumpling of any kind before, Sarah and I went on Amazon and got this dumpling maker. Do we know how to use this? No. Is that gonna stop us? It should. It's got a lot of different parts that we don't even know what it is for, like this. Is this to cut it? This is too small. Also, it comes with these cutter, circle cutters, circles for cutting. And so, yeah, that's what we're gonna try to do today. So I'm trying to think of the potential pitfalls that we might have with this recipe. And the first one is probably gonna be that the dough seems kind of delicate. And so we're gonna have to be very careful uh, rolling it out to make dumplings out of it. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is that we're not gonna be deep frying these. We're gonna be sauteing them in olive oil probably or avocado oil to get that brown crisp crust on the outside. The third possible pitfall of this recipe is that we don't exactly know how a filling would cook inside this pot sticker. So I think just to be safe, we're gonna start off by making the filling and letting it cool and then filling our pot stickers with the filling already cooked because pot stickers are made of pork and you don't wanna eat raw pork, okay? So we're gonna be cooking the pork filling first. You can find this recipe on our website, ketotwins.com. We're gonna be leaving a link to this recipe in the description below along with all of the implements that we purchased for this recipe. So to get started on our filling for our keto friendly pot stickers, I added one pound of ground pork into a pan on medium heat and I started breaking that down and you want it to get pretty small because you're gonna be wanting to fill your pot stickers with this filling. So we used uh, a handy dandy thingy majiggy to get it uh, down to a uniform size. I added half a teaspoon of fresh grated ginger and then I got lazy midway through that process because it was taking forever. I had a half a teaspoon of dried ginger. You could add just fresh if you're not lazy like me. We have combined that all. I added about a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and I just kind of stirred that all in. The pork is about ready. We don't want to overcook this, remember, because it is going to be fried in a pan. To our mostly cooked ground pork, we've added in a teaspoon of garlic powder. We've added in a tablespoon of soy sauce or your favorite keto-friendly replacement. Coconut aminos, we use soy sauce because we're technically keto here. I used to call that coconut amino. <laughs> Yes, uh, soy sauce does have trace amounts of wheat in it, but I don't care, I'm eating it anyway. We added in one teaspoon of sesame oil. We added three tablespoons of chopped cilantro. I added in two stalks of green onions, finely chopped, and I just kind of stirred it and I turned off the heat, and we're just gonna let this completely cool to the side. I don't wanna overcook the filling because we're not gonna be cooking this in the actual pot sticker, so you want it not to be all dried out. Okay, now is the scary part. <laughs> we're gonna get started with our dough. So if this doesn't work out, we'll just eat it like that, and that's keto, congratulations. Or you could eat it like pot sticker in a bowl, which is kind of like egg roll in a bowl, which I always thought was kind of a, it wasn't as good, let's just be honest. The wrapping is what makes an egg roll an egg roll. If not, it's just vegetables. Nothing replaces that crispy outside. That is what really does it for me for an egg roll. So hopefully we can achieve a pot sticker like thing in this video. For the dough for our pot stickers, we are gonna be using the recipe from sugarfreelondoner.com. We're gonna be leaving a link to this recipe in the description below and a link to the video where we made this recipe a couple weeks ago. This is where we got the idea to do this. So first of all, I put the egg in the mixing bowl and I whisked that on high for about a minute and I started adding in my other ingredients. The other ingredients are ricotta, parmesan, and salt. And I whisked that again. And then I went in with my coconut flour and combined that thoroughly. And then I mixed together my psyllium husk and my xanthan gum because I found that it's really helpful if you distribute your xanthan gum in something else that's dry before you add it into your recipe because xanthan gum can stick together once it hits moisture and you don't want that. So mixing xanthan gum with salt or psyllium husk or whatever other flour that you have can help distribute it through the recipe recipe more evenly. So I mixed that thoroughly with the whisk for another minute and then I kind of like scraped down the sides of the mixing bowl and I kind of collected the dough into one spot and then I transferred it into a bowl and put it into our freezer. You can put it in the refrigerator for an hour or in the freezer for about 15 minutes. 
So it's been like 20 minutes in the freezer. The ricotta gnocchi dough is nice and hard. We're going to spray my hands with a little bit of oil because it is very sticky. I'm going to form this into a ball and I'm going to cut the ball into four parts. So I made these four balls and this is where it's going to get iffy because I don't know like the thickness that we're gonna to have to do it. This is an experiment, right? And so I'm thinking that this should be able to make two pot stickers, but it's a guesstimate, right? So I'm gonna put this between two pieces of parchment paper. I'm gonna to start to roll it out and see where we go from there. Big enough for the mold. Now I'm realizing that this dough is super fragile. I know it was, but with a gnocchi, you weren't like manipulating it as much. So you have to be very careful with this dough. I've decided that we're going to cut out our dough shape. So it came with the dumpling set that we bought, this cutter, this is the biggest one. I think any smaller than that is going to be really hard to manipulate. I greased both sides of parchment paper so that it wouldn't stick and that seemed to help a lot. So I made five pot sticker wrappings on one piece of parchment paper. I'm going to make the rest of it so I'm thinking with this recipe, you should probably get about 10 if this turns out. The other thing I'm gonna say, uh, we're gonna put this in, back in the freezer for like 10 minutes because they're really fragile. And so the filling process is going to have to be very fast and then we're probably going to have to freeze them again. So while our pot sticker shells, what is it? Skins, skins, shells, dough. Um, while our rounds for our pot stickers are in the refrigerator, we're gonna quickly make our sauce. It's super simple. I came up with this a couple years ago and it's really, really good. Typically we use allulose in this recipe, but we're not going to today because we're just gonna be using stevia. To a bowl, we're gonna add in two tablespoons of soy sauce or coconut aminos. Aminos. Am 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 what did I aminos. Say? aminos. <laughs> coconut aminos. I used a fourth of a teaspoon of liquid stevia, one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, one sliced green onion, and a fourth of a teaspoon of sesame oil. I kind of mixed it all together. You could always add um, a dash of water if you want to thin it out a little bit, but I like mine pretty potent. And we're just gonna stick that in the freezer, ready to go. So these have been in the freezer. They are probably a little easier to handle now. Oh. There's a hole in this one. That's fine. Why? Is it too small? No. So far, so good. Yes. So I, I think you put it right in the middle, right? We're gonna go with it a tablespoon or? This is like a teaspoon of filling. Hmm. Hmm. A little bit more. Okay. Just a little bit. Let's not overfill on the first one. I'm scared. Okay, hold on. I'm frightened. Here we go. Here we go. In the words of our father, here we are having fun. He still says it. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Stick my finger in it. Keep going. Keep going. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now slowly. Okay. It will close it completely. Yep. And then pull down on the saran wrap so the saran wrap helps to release it, you know? Okay. I eat it. Let's but just keep that there. We're going with the smaller one to okay. see if that fits this size better. Okay. Okay. Here we are. Trying the smaller one now. It's all a learning process. Ooh. Do I go like this? Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's just. There you go. <laughs> the meat is coming out that side. Get in there! <laughs> okay. I think we're overfilling it. Okay, we're gonna try it without the mold. Don't, let's not do too much. Let's just what? do enough. That's what enough. kind of dumpling is it without any filling? Okay. okay. This is, it's fragile, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like not like a dough that has a cheese. Normal, right. You know what? I'm happy with this. I mean, that's not terrible with like that. And that one's okay. I think that's savable. Maybe it works. So our dumping press or whatever that is, it didn't work for this recipe. We found out pretty quick that the ricotta gnocchi is way too soft and it doesn't hold up to being able to be pressed like we need it to be. And so we just did it by hand. I don't think they turned out bad. I'm really excited actually. They look really, really good. They're all sealed. We're gonna stick these into the freezer again for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're gonna start heating up our oil. We're gonna brown these on both sides in plenty of oil. 
the point of keeping them in the freezer is so that they do stay together. That's why you're gonna wanna like, every time you touch them or keep them out for a long time, you're gonna wanna stick them back in the freezer. So let's put them in the freezer and then we're gonna start heating up our oil for frying. We have about three or four tablespoons of olive oil in a pan. I'm going to be grabbing out the pot stickers from the freezer and dropping them into the oil once it's hot. And then we're gonna fry them on both sides. Hopefully they're gonna stay together. I'm worried about it, honestly. We have a paper towel on a plate over here so we can transfer the pot stickers after they've browned on both sides. Remember the filling is cooked, so you don't need to cook these that long. It's just to get that nice color on the outside. And then we're gonna serve it up with some dipping sauce and we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna try them. Alrighty, well we're here, we made it. <laughs> there were some touch and go moments there for a second, but this dough is super duper fragile. So when we made the gnocchi with the same dough, it was pretty simple because you know, you were just rolling it into a ball. You were scoring the outside of that ball on a fork and making like the gnocchi shape. Yeah. With this, we were trying to stuff it. And so that la added a layer <laughs> of like complication. For the most part, I think it turned out pretty well. We did have some losses. I mean, there's a couple upstairs, so we made, I think eight survived. We had 10 rounds to start with. I mean, it it's not that fragile. It smells good. Mm -hmm. A little bit of dippy sauce here. Can't go wrong with that. Mm. It's like they're puffy. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's reminding me of a pot sticker for sure. So if you guys tried that other gnocchi recipe, it's really soft and pillowy. I would say that the, the same is true for this. They're mm -hmm. very soft and pillowy, which is really nice. I think she wrote that like 13 or something gnocchi would be about 4.8 net carbs. I would say it takes about four gnocchi to make one of these. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a carb each. Mm -hmm. I wish that there was a way to make it a little bit, I don't know, more structure, the dough. Mm -hmm. We'll have to experiment with that in the future. Maybe there is a way to add maybe more coconut flour or maybe a little bit more xanthan gum to give it a little bit more structure so that we could put it in that press. But overall, I think they're super delicious. I think they kind of hold up. You just have to be a little gentle with them. Pot stickers can kind of be like gummy a little mm -hmm. bit. These are not, they're like pillowy, pillowy pot stickers. I would eat it again. I liked it. And I think it makes a great replacement for a pot sticker. The other choice is cabbage, so you choose. I mean, soft pillowy outside with like a nice browning or cabbage. And cabbage is really simple to use too if you guys didn't want to go through this. We did right. a whole video about that that we can link below. I think this is a cool way to try out how to utilize one recipe and make it into something else that's keto friendly. And if you guys have any ideas of what we should put in this dough neck, we did pot stickers this time. Could it be pierogies next time? Who knows? Well, leave a comment below if you have any ideas. We would love to hear it. And if you guys want to see the first time we ever tried this gnocchi recipe, you can click on this video right here and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily. And I'm Sarah. And, and we, we are, are the Keto, keto Twins signing out. out.